welcome learners. We are coming to the concluding part of our discussion on market segmentation, that is on Unit 5 of your marketing management course in your second semester. So we shall take up the other the remaining two learning objectives of Unit 5, market segmentation. And this particular video would be basically about targeting and positioning. So in our first two videos, we have discussed what marketing seg market segmentation is all about. That market basically is an heterogeneous thing. Market needs to be grouped into distinct segments. That is market segmentation. And then each of these segments will have to be uh, addressed by a marketer. However, the marketer can address those uh, segments by different ways. It could be undifferentiated marketing. It could be concentrated marketing like that. So in this case, in this particular video, we shall take up the remaining two learning objectives. One is what is market targeting? Target market, target market we have been talking about. Conceptually, what is market targeting or target marketing? And second one is we shall also try to understand the concept of market positioning. This concept of market positioning is very, very important because we shall have to uh, understand some of the concepts of advertising also in a later uh, course of our MBA program. What is market targeting? Market targeting is basically a process of taking a decision regarding the market segments to be covered, to be served. A market comprises of different segments. We cannot go for covering all the segments in the market. It's not possible. So we need to be concerned about which target segment we should be concerned about. So the marketer distinguishes the market segments, major market segments in terms of certain characteristics and targets one or more of these segments and develop products and marketing programs tailored to each selected segment. So some of the marketers might offer a very low end product at the low end of the market. A cheap kind of product. So later on, they might think about upgrading them. They will upgrade their quality and accordingly the price also will be high. Some marketers might think about first targeting at the upper segment with a high quality product, highly priced at the high end of the market right, to the premium segment. Then later on, they will reduce the price. They will reduce the quality also to some extent and they will make it an acceptable kind of quality. May not be very superior quality. This is what? This is a segment mapping so they will they will identify the different segments and accordingly they will target which segments to be covered which segments to be served and that is basically target marketing so evaluating market segments and target market basically we need to be concerned about the relative attractiveness of the market segment each of the market segment will be giving us certain advantages at the same time, each of the market segment will be giving us certain challenges also. So we need to be aware about the relative attractiveness of the market segments. Then we should, we should also be able to identify our own ability to what extent we are able. Suppose we are thinking of launching a very premium quality product at a very premium price, but may not be. We may not be that equipped with our quality parameters. So we need to upgrade our production facilities. We need to upgrade our quality monitoring mechanism. We need to upgrade our research and development. Then only possibly we would be able to do that. So in that case, identify very, very premium segment at this point of time may not be feasible for us. So we need to identify what could be the relative attractiveness of the market segments. And if the segments are attractive, whether are we in a position to serve those segments or not, that needs to be seen. Now, the relative attractiveness of the market segments, which segment is likely to be attractive for us, we need to see that particular thing based on certain characteristics. What could be those things? One could be the size of the segment. If the size of the segment is very, very large, in that case, we can think about segmenting that particular large segment into some sub-segments. Or maybe that large, that large segment might be having different players also in that market. What is the growth rate of the segment? Say in today's context, say educational technology is a high growing product. It's not it. Eating out, say Uber Eats, or say many people are going to have like, non-home food, food. That is a growing demand, it's not it. 
But Corona has jeopardized some of the marketing mix that we have been having so far. But still, we can identify certain pattern in which the certain segments, the growth rate we can observe. If the growth rate of the segment is high, the size of the segment is good, sizable, and the segment is to some extent non-price sensitive that even if we increase the price, the segment will still buy means loyalty is there to some extent and the nature of competition is not that intense. There is no entry barrier. Anybody can enter the market and anybody can make an exit also from the market. And there is a social trend, like as I have told you, say eating out or say going outside or having non-home food right, procured at the home, home only. Or could be political issues, suppose say GST, etc. Right? In certain segments, there could be some tax exemption. We can identify those segments. So means, after identifying the segments, we need to evaluate the worth of the segment in terms of their size, in terms of their growth, in terms of their preference, in terms of their price sensitivity, in terms of the political aspects, in terms of the social aspects, we shall be able to identify the segment in terms of their attractiveness. We need to assess that. Then we need to assess our own ability. Are we in a position to serve those segments? So a segment may be very profitable, as I have told you. Say premium segment with high price product, with high, high quality products may be very profitable, but we may not be able. We are, as of now, we may not be able to serve that particular segment. So a segment may be profitable, but it may be difficult to serve effectively due to lack of resources and competencies. A company should be, a company should be uh, very sure that it has the required resources such as exploitable marketing assets, research and development capacity, cost advantage, technological age compared to others, or say it has got a management capacities, factories to produce those kind of things, marketing distribution facilities, logistics facilities, right? commitment of its sales force. It will have to see all these aspects whether it is able to satisfy the segment or not then we cover come to the other aspects of this particular set that is market positioning how do we position the our products in the market because the market has got different competitors each of the competitors say Godrej is having its own easy products or say the market even say Hindustan Unilever it has got its own rin, surf say right, different products sunlight, OK detergent. So each of these is different. So how are they going to position each of these in the market? So each of these is positioned in terms of certain benefits that it is going to serve to the target customers. And ultimately customers develop certain position, perception. Say Godrej EG is only for woolen garments, but you can wash some other clothes also with Godrej EG. But the perception that has been created by the marketing communication and that has been set by the user's experiences is that it is an image that the customers buy. Customers' positive perceptions ultimately will be the responsibility of the marketer. We need to create a positive perception in the minds of the customers about the particular product. And the marketer should decide clearly the perceptions that it needs to be built in the target customer's mind. Because ultimately positioning will take place in the psyche of the customer. The customer will think about a particular brand and the customers will act according to that perception. So positioning is creating that perception in the minds of the customers. So we can in this context, right, uh, dear learners, you can refer to some of the standard definitions of positioning in your study material. Philip Kotler, the doyen of marketing, he has defined positioning is the act of designing a company's offer and image so that it occupies a distinct and valued place in the target customers. So Air India, right, the Maharaja logo, I like that kind of things, that Air India is different from say SpiceJet. SpiceJet is different from say Air India. Customers, the Air passengers will take certain positioning, will develop certain perception about that product. The marketers should be highly concerned about that positioning. Positioning is the art of selecting out of a number of unique selling propositions. So, say Godrej EG detergent, I have been giving the example, is for woolen products. For the products which require an extra care, it's unlike the other detergents. Coca-Cola is different from Pepsi-Cola. Ancola, it's not Coca-Cola, it's not Cola. Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, it's not Cola, it's Ancola. That is a distinct positioning. 
So the most important decision you will make about your product is how should I position my product. So this is the definition given by David Ogilvy. He is the father of creative advertising. So positioning strategies could be referenced based on product attributes. Say toothpaste, some of the toothpaste could be for dental care, some of the toothpaste could be for dental uh, cavity or some of the toothpaste could be for zam fighting. So based on product attribute, we can think about a positioning, we can think about the benefits that the products are going to give or it could be based on the usage occasion. Say it's a morning product, it's an evening product, like that. Say complex is a breakfast product or say Maggi two minutes noodles is an afternoon snack. Something like this. So it's based on users occasions. It could be for certain classes of users. Say certain classes of users, this could be on demographic variables, say working women, time pressed. So they for them say health difference. Or it could be directly against the competitor. Say Coca-Cola is different from Pepsi Cola, the positioning. Or it could be positioning away from competitors, say and cola. We are not for Pepsi Cola, we are not against Coca-Cola also. We are a different category altogether. Or it could be for different product classes, say uh, for extra safety, Godrej lock, for say domestic users, say Godrej Naptal lock. So depending upon the class of the users, depending upon the unique requirements of the buyers, so the marketers might think about coming across with different kinds of products. So positioning also the marketers are ultimately will have to decide about in different upon the number of planks on which plank the product will have to be positioned and all this basically based on market segmentation to what extent we are capable of segmenting a market identifying the market and then after identifying whether we are able to serve that market if we are able to serve that market how should we serve that market that is basically positioning so my dear learners you read the unit and you'll be able to understand the concepts better thank you i wish you all the best